Hi there, I'm Jamie Dyer. This video is about evolutionary trees, which are diagrams that depict the relationships between groups of organisms. Evolutionary trees can be used to answer some really interesting questions, like what did the first form of life look like? Where did the COVID-19 coronavirus come from? Did a doctor actually get in a fight with his ex-girlfriend and spitefully infect her with HIV? It was 1994, and the doctor had been having an affair with his ex-girlfriend, the victim, for 10 years. One night after a big fight where they broke up, he went over to her house and gave her a vitamin B shot. Six months later, she was diagnosed with HIV. According to the medical records at the doctor's office, the night he administered the vitamin B shot, he had also drawn blood from a patient who was HIV positive. The victim suspected that the vitamin B shot was actually blood from the HIV positive patient. But the doctor argued that she could have gotten HIV from someone else. I mean, is it even possible to prove where somebody got their HIV from? Of course it is, I wouldn't be telling you this if it wasn't possible. The police in the case hired some scientists. They published this paper. And in order to prove whether the doctor was guilty or not, they used an evolutionary tree. Because HIV, like all viruses and all living things, uses nucleic acids, like RNA or DNA, to store its genetic information. Anytime one organism makes a copy of its genetic code, mutations might happen. So as one virus copies itself into two, and two into four, and so on, sometimes a mutation will happen that will be passed on to all of that virus's offspring. The scientists can take the genetic sequence of different HIV viruses, and they can reconstruct the family tree of those viruses by comparing the differences in the sequences. The more differences between two sequences, the more distantly related those viruses are. By the way, sometimes scientists want to construct an evolutionary tree for organisms that we don't have DNA sequences for. So in that case, scientists use differences in body shape instead of DNA sequences in order to determine relatedness. So if the doctor infected the victim with HIV from the patient, then her HIV viruses would be more closely related to the patient's viruses than to the viruses of anyone else in the community. To test that, the scientists determined the sequence of viruses from the victim, the patient, and several HIV-positive people from the community, and they determined the evolutionary relationship between all those viruses. Here are the actual results. But how do we look at an evolutionary tree like this and tell whether the victim's viruses are more closely related to the patient's? To answer that question, we need to know how to read evolutionary trees. An evolutionary tree is a lot like a family tree. This is my family tree. The current generation is at the tips of the tree, down here. Ancestors are up here, farther away from the tips of the tree. One major difference between a family tree and an evolutionary tree is that we don't know who the ancestors are, since they usually aren't alive anymore. But because they gave rise to their descendants, we know they existed. The ancestors are represented by each branching point in the tree. We call those nodes. Each node represents the most recent common ancestor of all the branches coming off of it. Nodes that are farther away from the tips of the tree represent older ancestors. But how do you look at an evolutionary tree and tell which organisms are more closely related to which? You could count the steps. In this tree, elephants and lions are one step away from each other, but elephants and eagles are two steps away from each other. Does that mean that elephants and lions are more closely related than elephants and eagles? The problem is, the real world has more than five animals in it. There are lions and tigers and bears, oh my. and many other species. On this tree, if I count the steps, now it seems like elephants are really distantly related to lions. But of course, the relationship between elephants and lions hasn't actually changed. I've just included more animals on the tree. So don't count the steps. Whether there are just a few organisms on the tree or a lot, it doesn't change the relationships between the organisms. Another possibility is to see which organisms are closest to each other on the tips of the tree. On this tree, eagles are farther away from elephants than they are to squid. Are eagles more closely related to squid than they are to elephants? To help us think about this, let's go back to my family tree. I've constructed my family tree as a mobile. There's me. Now, you know intuitively that I'm more closely related to my cousin, Michael, than I am to my second cousin, Megan. Now, if I rotate here where my grandpa George is, now, I'm close to Megan in the tree, and I'm far away from my cousin, Michael. But I haven't actually gotten more closely related to my second cousin, Megan, right? I'm still more closely related to my cousin, Michael. I've just changed the way the tree looks. So this is true for any evolutionary tree. In this tree, eagles are closer to squid than they are to elephants. But if I rotate around this node here, now eagles are closer to elephants, and they're really far away from squid. But I haven't actually changed the relationships between the animals. I've just changed the way the tree looks. In fact, I can rotate around any node, 
And it will change the way the tree looks, but it doesn't change the relationships between the organisms on the tree. So don't see which organisms are closest to each other on the tips of the tree, because the tree can rotate around any node without changing the relationships between the organisms. Another option is to compare the most recent common ancestors. You know that I'm more closely related to my cousin Michael than I am to my second cousin Megan. Well, that's because my cousin and I share the same grandfather. He's our most recent common ancestor, but he is not an ancestor of our second cousin Megan. The most recent common ancestor between me and my second cousin Megan is our great-grandmother Agnes. She's a generation older than my grandfather, which is why she's farther away from the tips of the tree. Now, in an evolutionary tree, we don't know what the ancestors looked like, but we still know they existed. Each node in the tree represents an ancestor. So the most recent common ancestor between eagles and elephants is here. It gave rise to elephants, lions, and eagles, but not to squid or octopus. There is a most recent common ancestor between eagles and squid, but it's older, farther away from the tips of the tree. Since the most recent common ancestor between eagles and elephants is more recent, eagles are more closely related to elephants than they are to squid. So yes, when you want to know which organism is more closely related to which, compare the most recent common ancestors. It turns out, this logic works no matter what the tree looks like. I can rearrange the tree this way, or this way, or this way, and always the most recent common ancestor between eagles and elephants is more recent than the most recent common ancestor between eagles and squid. Remember the doctor and the victim? So the scientists predicted that if the doctor infected the victim with HIV from the patient, then the victim's HIV viruses should be most closely related to the patient's HIV viruses. Here are the results. These are the HIV viruses from the victim. It turns out that HIV mutates so rapidly that there are genetically different viruses, even in one person. And these are the viruses from the patient. And the most recent common ancestor between them is here. And the most recent common ancestor between the victim and anyone else in the community is back here. And since this most recent common ancestor is closer to the tips of the tree, it's more recent. And that's why the scientists concluded that the victim and the patient's viruses were very closely related, suggesting that the doctor did in fact infect her with HIV from his patient. So this was the first time that an evolutionary tree was ever used in a criminal court in America. As for the doctor, well, he was convicted of attempted murder and sent to prison, based in part on what we learned from an evolutionary tree.